Hi, it's the Quarantine Show, Episode 3, Tokyo Drift. A salute to our troops. Subscribe below. Hey, young Missy. Hey, young Missy. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Hey. Come on. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Oh, got a tasty bone for you. Got a bone. Here you go. Come on, girl. That's it. Come on, girl. Come on, come on. Well, who do we got in the tank today? Just a couple guys we found downtown trying to fuck a dog. Then the man says, just some guys we found downtown trying to fuck a dog. Print it. Comedy is about one thing and one thing only, relating to people. I'm Trevor Moore. And I am Paul Chop the Dog. And we're teaching you how to write sketch comedy. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks that you can use to take your sketch from good all the way to great. Trevor and I have been writing together for 11 years. There are two important questions that you have to ask yourself in every single scene that you write. One, is there a dog in the scene? And two, if there is, who is trying to sleep with it? If a dog is introduced on page one, someone should be trying to sleep with it by page three. In the sketch that we're shooting today, it is the prisoners who want to sleep with the dog. In episode two, we turned everything on its head. It was the dog trying to sleep with the human. <laughs> so we deconstructed the entire paradigm. That's something you get for putting in your $10,000. You have to trust yourself enough to dream. What are paragraphs? How do you use them? Why are some words spelled differently than others? How to make the text bigger so it looks like you've written more than you have. How to insert subliminal Nazi propaganda into your sketches. How to remove Nazi propaganda from your sketches without angering your writing partner. I am having a love affair with my craft. Now, are sketch comedy writers more important than doctors or nurses? Yes. This is an art form. This is our gift to you. I'm Trevor Moore. And I'm Paul Chop the Dog. And this is our masterclass. Hi, well, welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Trevor Moore, and I'm here with two very great guests today. I'm here with Mo Collins, who's from uh, Mad TV, uh, also on Fear the Walking Dead, um, and Scott Thompson, who's from the legendary sketch group Kids in the Hall and Hannibal, which is also a great show. And uh, you guys are doing another season of Kids in the Hall right now, right? Yes, we're in the middle of it. We're in the middle of the writing process, so. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> we were, they announced our reboot a week before the world fell apart, so <laughs> once again, we screwed everything up. <laughs> Actually, that works out pretty well, because you can still write, you can still be in production. Yeah. I literally had to leave a fictional apocalypse and come into a real one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's much more fun. <laughs> I was thinking the other day that I would rather live in a city that was occasionally like strafed by fighters, like bomb bombs, right? Then go one more fucking day alone like this. If they said to me, you have a choice, you're gonna be in isolation for another couple of months, or there's gonna be certain streets in the city that there's snipers and you should avoid them. <laughs> and occasionally we they will they will like uh, bomb the city. And yeah. what do you choose? I would choose that. <laughs> I know. I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, what we're doing, like trying to stick a you know, a zombie in the forehead, that's easy. <laughs> that's easy. You know why? You can see them. <laughs> yeah. you, you plus, can you have, plus everyone has friends on Walking Dead. There's a whole group of friends. Yes, exactly. Tribal. We get to be with their tribe. They're still having sex on your yeah. show. Like people are fucking. No one's yeah. fucking. 
You can't, yeah, we you can't fuck because the COVID gets in the semen, I hear. <laughs> they were fucking in Yugoslavia during the, the siege. I know that. Yes. <laughs> no one was completely alone. There was so much fucking in Sarajevo during that time. And I, I really would, I would choose that. Scott, you need to do an album called Sarajevo fucking. <laughs> fucking, exactly. Because it's so Sarajevo hot. Like that's it's that really, kind of. It's got a romantic that, ring, and I can already. Right see now, I mean, I probably couldn't get away with Syria hot because there's so much fucking heat there, and all those people in those fucking buildings together, all those men, furious. <laughs> <laughs> Syria hot, but this is not. This is not hot. This, no, this is not hot. hot. It's a lot like being in space. Don't you feel like you're on like like a like a. a um, the shuttle or something? Not the shuttle. Not the shuttle. <laughs> I feel like a the school teacher on on a shuttle. <laughs> I would rather be Krista McAuliffe than spend one more fucking day. I'd rather. <laughs> okay, so the first question you each get a different. You each get a different question. Can't we okay. just look at each other for a bit? Can't we just look at each <laughs> other, please? Just, you, you guys look great. Good. You look great. I can't. You know, it's it's either of you. I can't. It's more important to look good than to feel good anyway. Uh, yeah, that's nice. True. Yeah. You both look nice. You both look Sarajevo hot. <laughs> Sarajevo hot. Um, okay, so here's the first tough question for Mo. This one's for Mo. All right. There, uh, since it's walking, you're on Walking Dead. Uh, Scott was on Hannibal, so we're, the, the topic's going to be like murder for this for for these questions. Okay. Um, so Mo, there's two buttons that you have. You have to press one of them, and one button will kill 10 million people across the whole planet. The other button will kill five million people, so half as many, but they would all be from the same ethnicity. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> oh my God. Um, oh my God. <laughs> <sighs> this is awful. Oh, yeah. Not that hard. Well, mm. a little bit. I mean, because it depends no. on who you want to take out. Yeah, racism wins. You know, I mean, mm. <laughs> racism wins. <laughs> racism. <laughs> Racism, but um, I think I'd have to choose my own race. Oh, oh you don't get to choose. You have no idea. It could be your own race, or it could be a very vulnerable race. Wait a second. White people are the most vulnerable race right now. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Come on. Um, <laughs> geez. I hate racism, but I, I'd have to go for a smaller number. Right? Uh, I think that's the right thing to do. Because yeah. it's not like you're intentional. You're just like, look, I, it's, it's do people terrifying. know that? Do people know the decision I made that I chose to take out? It doesn't matter because eventually no one's going to care. You are going to be murdered by a member of that ethnic group. Most likely. So Most likely. Five Your life is over. Five. No one's going to forgive you. Yeah. And, but <laughs> you still have to do it for in, in maybe thousands of years from now, they'll understand that Mo Collins was a hero not a racist. She saved, it's how you look saved at five it. Five million people. You because I saved, like five, saved five million stuff. people of other races. All yeah. races, yes. Of all races. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's Scott's question. Uh-oh. Okay, so Scott, you also, there's also, okay, so you have to sign the order that would kill a hundred thousand people. Okay. And sign it. But the other thing that you have, uh, or your option is you have to, the other option kills the last five remaining panda bears, but you have to do it personally. And like, you can only use like a hammer and and also the panda bears can speak English for just a small period of time. And so they're like, they're like, don't do this. Why are you doing this? And you can't tell them that you're doing it because of it's a, a, um, you, the other, you can't tell them why. You have to say that you're doing it because you don't like them. You don't like talking panda bears. 
But the panda bears aren't like as intelligent as humans. They just have this trick they can do, like a crow. Kind of. Well, I don't know. I mean, because I think they realize that you're killing them and they're looking at you and they're like... And that, makes, that brings them up to the level of human beings, doesn't it? You can't say that. Like, they're not human. Like, they're not, not human, no. But they're... Well, they're, uh, sentient beings. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Now, how big is the hammer? Is it a big hammer? Is it a little <laughs> ball peen? I wouldn't want to... It would take a long time to kill them with a ball peen hammer. I, I think, uh, you know, I think it's a regular hammer, not like a cartoonishly big one. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would kill the five pandas. Yeah. yeah. Human life is important. We all got to stick together. Yes, I, 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 I do. Even, yes, I do. I believe human life is paramount. I know that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I think you guys both did great. I think we, 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 cho we chose humanism. Yeah. I think you guys picked the right answers. We didn't let identity politics stop our humanism. Yeah. That's all. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. That's it.